We'll call this meeting of August 22nd to order the City Council. To call a roll, please. Williams? Yes. Hey. Yes. Miller? Yes. Brig? Yes. Shivers? Yes. First item, I need a motion to um, amend the agenda, approve the amended agenda. I move to approve the amended agenda. <laughs> second. Thank you. Who second? I'm sorry. I did. <clears throat> Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Next item is approval of the minutes of our last council meeting, August 8th. A regular move. session and study session. I move we approve the minutes of August 8th, 2022. Second. Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. <clears throat> Item four is a public hearing. I need a motion to open the public hearing. Make so a motion. Go. Or a second. <laughs> we'll get it. Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. The public hearings established the 2022 property tax rate. Mr. Slagle. Yes, Your Honor. As required by law, the city needs to conduct this public hearing to uh, establish uh, the property tax rates. To cover it in more detail, as far as uh, the numbers, uh, we are going to turn to uh, Roger Haynes. Good news, assessed value is up and the property tax rate to be proposed goes down. Uh, the county assessor and the state auditor's office work together to review the assessed values and then the auditor's office provides us a pro forma uh, calculations to show what is allowed as far as a tax levy that would uh, generate a levy that would be revenue neutral as compared to the prior year with exception of new construction. Uh, we have about a five page presentation here making some comparisons from last year to this year. Uh, the assessed valuation last year uh, in total was $159,224,000. Uh, we did have a, a jump in that overall assessed value to $175,152,000. And as you can see, all categories, real estate, personal property, and railroad and utilities uh, increased across the board. Making a comparison to the levies and what we utilized last year as a levy compared to what is recommended this evening. You can see the, the general fund, the parks and recreation, the public health funds, all are showing a slight decline in the overall uh, assessment levy rate. Uh, we are growing in total from a 73.92 cents per $100 assessed valuation to 73.77 cents. $100 assessed valuation. A little bit of an overview of how the calculations are determined to get a revenue neutral rate. The State Auditor's Office uh, provides the City of Mexico a pro forma calculation that depicts the levy rates that are allowed for 2022. Several factors are involved in that, uh, such as prior year assessment, prior year valuation assessment adjustments, current year assessment, value of assessment growth through new construction, the reassessments, consumer price index caps, value loss through asset aging or reclassification, and limits set through voter approval as tax rate caps. Uh, to walk through the calculations for the general fund, uh, we'll look at uh, a number of figures here. First of all would be the current year assessed value of the $175 million. $152,425. Less assessed valuation of new construction and improvements for the year, which were $10,441,950. Gives us the adjusted current assessed valuation on previously existing property. And that amount would have arrived at $164,709,944. The prior year assessed valuation less assessed value of property locally assessed in the prior year but state assessed in the current year which this year was zero equals the adjusted prior year assessed valuation which is coming right back to that $150,224,104. For the general fund the prior year's adjusted assessed value multiplied by 2021's permitted general levy uh, rate equals a maximum prior year adjusted revenue which in this case would be $699,790. 
for the general fund, the maximum prior year adjusted revenue plus the permitted reassessment growth, which is 3.4454% this year, equals allowable revenue of $723,901 for the general fund. That divided by the adjusted current assessed valuation of $164,709,944 equals the allowable tax rate for this year, which comes out to be 43.95 cents per $100 assessed valuation. Again, that is for the general fund. The same calculations uh, take place for both the parks and public health funds. And staff confirms the rate for the parks fund to be 9.94 cents and for the public health fund 19.88 cents per $100 assessed valuation respectively. This shows the estimated amount of revenue generated by that levy for each of the funds. The general fund would receive revenue in the neighborhood of $769,795. Parks and Recreation, $174,101, and Public Health, $348,200. Again, totaling $1,292,099, based on the recommended rate of 73.77 cents for $100 assessed valuation. How does that compare to past years? You'll see the proposed rate at the bottom. And if you compare that rate on the far right-hand side, you will see that basically it's been within, been within a couple of pennies over the last eight or nine years. We did go ahead and go back all the way to 2012 because that's when we park, passed the parks tax and uh, the voters were told that we would reduce the parks fund levy from 20 cents to uh, 10 cents uh, the next year. That's what occurred between 2012 and 2013. That's the end of my presentation. I'd be glad to field any questions you might have. So, what is that? The one million two hundred ninety-two thousand ninety-nine at environment. What does that compare to from last year? About flat or? Uh, it, last year we brought in one. As far as based on the same oh. scenario last year. Um, $1,173,000, it's about $118,000 difference. And the difference comes from, so the only way that grows really is new construction, new stuff? New construction and reassessments. More questions? If not, this is the public hearing. If you would like to come up and make a comment, please come to the podium, state your name and address. Try to hold your comments to three minutes. Seeing no one, I would entertain a motion to adjourn out of the public hearing. And then we close the public hearing. Second. Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Next item on the agenda is Bill Number 2022-41, an ordinance levying taxes on all property for the fiscal year October 1, 22 to September 30, 23, for the City of Mexico, Missouri. Two readings by title only and passage. Mr. Schleck. Yes, Your Honor. This ordinance establishes the property tax rate for the next fiscal year. And as required by law, we had to hold the public hearing, which we've just completed. As Roger indicated, that the total assessed value is up, and the levy does go down a little bit. So unless council you have any other questions, we would recommend that uh, council proceed with two readings by title only. Passage of the test ordinance and the ordinance has been posted as required length of time. I'll move for reading of bill number 2022-41. Second. Williams? Yes. Haig? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Is this a two reading? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, yes. sorry. Uh, bill number 2022-41, an ordinance levying taxes on all property for the fiscal year October 1st, 2022 to September 30th, 2023 for the City of Mexico, Missouri. I move for the second reading of Bill number 2022-41. Second. Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shiver? Yes. Bill number 2022-41, an ordinance levying taxes on all property for the fiscal year October 1st, 2022 to September 30th, 2023 for the City of Mexico, Missouri. I move for passage of Bill number 2022-41. Second. Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. <coughs> 
Next item is bill number 2022-42, an ordinance creating a new article 16, chapter 42, title renewable energy system within the code of ordinance of the city of Mexico. <coughs> Two readings by title only passage. Mr. Cycle. Yes, Your Honor. As we brought this ordinance forth before and then discussed in a work session, um, renewable energy um, systems as a whole is becoming far more popular than they used to be and uh, that uh, currently we do not have uh, regulations as far as uh, the uh, placement establishment and so on so we are uh, recommending that uh, we proceed with uh, with uh, some new regulations and to uh, cover the proposed ordinance at this time uh, Andy Fate our building official Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. On July 11th, uh, I presented a renewable energy system ordinance to you. Uh, the outcome of that presentation was the fact that we really would like to have a work session to really kind of discuss uh, uh, primarily the issue of placement of solar panels on roofs. Uh, that is 42-106 section A. On July 25th, I came back to the council and shared with you uh, that we had examined 64 communities across the state of Missouri uh, and found that we were probably a little too restrictive in, in the ordinance. Therefore, um, I've taken a look at those 64 communities, have made modifications to section 42-106 section A, whereas uh, it will reflect the following changes. Solar panels may be located on the roof face. They may not extend above any roof peak. They must leave an unoccupied area of two foot in the front and four foot in the rear. And finally, pitched arrays must be supported by specific engineering drawings. Are there any questions against those modifications? Appreciate the work you've done on that, Andy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, looks good. Anybody have any questions? Actually, I was driving down this. I don't know if I was here or some other city, and I came up on a house, and the first thing I saw their solar panels, I went, what side roof are they on? <laughs> <laughs> and it was a south-facing roof, so I was like, yeah. yeah so, yeah, always but, should be. Good, yeah, thank you. I move for the passage, for the reading of bill number 2022-42. Second. Yes. Hey. Yes. Miller. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shiver. Yes. Bill number 2022-42, an ordinance creating a new article, XVI, Chapter 42, titled Renewable Energy Systems Within the Code of Ordinance in New Mexico. I move for a second reading. Second. William. Yes. Hey. Yes. Miller. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shiver. Yes. Bill number 2022-42, an ordinance creating a new article, XVI, Roman numeral XVI, chapter 42, titled Renewable Energy Systems Within the Code of Ordinance of the City of Mexico. I move for passage. Second. William? Yes. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Craig? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Next item is bill number 2020. 2-43, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a contract agreement with Myers Electric Company Incorporated for improvement of the Mexico Memorial Airport runway lighting and replacement project. Yes, Your Honor. Um, this uh, is to approve a contract with Meyer Electric for improvements at the airport. Um, and this work is uh, to begin actually in October. It's really part of the new budget. Um, this has been kind of an ongoing multi-year project. To cover the uh, details uh, more thoroughly, uh, Russell Runge. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Uh, yeah, as you all are aware, the uh, 10 years ago or 11 years ago, the uh, uh, Airport Advisory Board was created, and one of their main goals was to get the displacement off of the uh, uh, 624 runway on the east side. Uh, when that runway was built, there were two oil tanks that were located uh, along Highway 54 that at that time uh, were within the flight path, uh, barely. And those were removed shortly after the runway was completed, and it's taken this long to get back to getting to FAA, getting the approval.
approval to have those displacements removed. If this one, once we get this displacement off the east side removed, then we'll remove it off of our building that we lease to Home Depot. Um, but by doing so, the lights will all have to be moved, the uh, striping will have to be removed and replaced, put back in place properly. Um, and so this, there's a lot of different busy work that will be, need to be done. There's a considerable amount of, uh, of work being done by our, our engineer, Crawford Murphy and Tilly, uh, significant enough that we had another bid done to make sure that their, their uh, fees were in line and they were, uh, there were two bids on this project. Meyer Electric was the low bid, uh, was approved by Crawford Murphy and Tilly, and uh, we request that uh, council proceed. If you have any questions. questions? It's your pleasure. Move for first reading of bill number 2022-43. Second. Williams? Yes. Hey. Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Bill number 2022-43, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a contract agreement with Meyer Electric Company Incorporated for improvements to the Mexico Memorial Airport runway lighting replacement project. Move for second reading of bill number 2022-43. Second. Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shiver? Yes. Bill number 2022-43, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a contract agreement with Meyer Electric Company Incorporated for improvements to the Mexico Memorial Airport runway lightning replacement project. I move for passage. Second. 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 Did someone second? Yeah, he did. Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Item 6A, Bill Number 2022-44, a resolution authorizes the city manager to execute an environmental covenant with the Brownfield Voluntary Cleanup Program on the AP Green, formerly Shamrock uh, site. Uh, reading by title only and passage. Mr. Slager. Yes, Your Honor. As council is aware of uh, that uh, we took over ownership of the AP Green property and, and that uh, Shamrock uh, had started this process of the environmental remediation and cleanup and uh, we are taking over that program at this point and to complete it so that we can get a um, certificate of no additional action as far as cleanup and so on as it relates to ground issues and so on at the at the site so um, to cover this agreement uh, in more detail once again Russell Runge as Bruce mentioned the engineering department drew uh, Kinsey and I have been working to try to get to, uh, through this um, council did approve the city manager to uh, assign a letter of agreement at the beginning of the year um, to that point now where the environmental covenant can be signed uh, there were uh, monitoring wells that were on the site uh, to monitor groundwater uh, there were a few areas of contamination that were cleaned up but primarily uh, they found very little uh, so this environmental covenant covenants allows uh, for uh, industrial use um, and uh, there's no uh, does not allow uh, any housing to be uh, allowed on the site. So all 97 acres, I believe, is of it. Miss anything, Drew? You're correct. The site can't be used for housing, but can be for most anything else? Correct. The property is already zoned I-2, which prohibits sure. housing anyway. Pleasure of the board. Make a motion to read bill number 2022-44. Second. Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. Bill number 2022-44, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute an environmental covenant for the Brownfield Voluntary Cleanup Program on the AP Green, formerly Shamrock property site. Move for passage of bill number 2022-44. Second. Williams? Yes. Hay? Yes. Miller? Yes. Briggs? Yes. Shivers? Yes. 
The next item is item 7A, follow-up discussion on proposed 2022-23 annual budget. Mr. Slegel. Yes, Your Honor. At the uh, August 8th uh, study session, we reviewed in, in quite detail the uh, proposed budget for the upcoming year. In follow-up to that, Council had uh, a couple of questions. One uh, was um, a request to take a look at uh, wage by position, and um, we have uh, provided that as one of the documents to you to look at. Um, and if you have any questions about that, we'll be glad to uh, answer those. Uh, but the other issue that you wanted to take a look at was as we looked at uh, salaries, the potential to move from really just becoming average to being more competitive. And the question was as well, what would an additional 50 cents type of thing look like in the budget? And so this is the second scenario that we have here is the budget wage analysis. Um, the um, in the yellow categories would be what we already proposed in the budget <clears throat> and then you see what the 50 cents additional cost would be and as you see that's just a just under ninety thousand dollars but of course as we said the most significant concern that we had would be as how that would play into the general fund and as you see that's uh, just under 59 um, one of the things that we indicated we'd have to do in order to balance for state purposes to say that to, to make sure it's a balanced budget is we'd have to look at transferring additional uh, use tax dollars and uh, um, that is doable under this scenario but we also showed you a draft of what 30 cents would also do just as a comparison for you to look at um, so those I think are the numbers and stuff that you were asking for um, uh, looking at those, uh, we believe that we can make either one of those scenarios work. And uh, I think as a whole, we want to certainly thank you guys for taking a look at that information um, and trying to get more competitive because I think we all recognize the, the issues that we have, not only in retaining, but maintaining all <coughs> Um, competent employees so we want to thank you for that uh, for taking a look at this so we'll try to answer any questions you have did you did you see that Vicky? yeah did you want okay, okay. so what is that, that <laughs> so what does that work out for a raise percentages um, forget the pennies but I mean how much is that right it, it honestly it varies because of the way we already stepped in some other things based on how we slid those other scales so um, you can look at a starting police officer Officer, and that can be uh, uh, basically a 12% in those areas um, or in some other areas you're dealing it, it it's everywhere from that probably all the way back down to a, to a, a five area um, it, it, by adding this in so. and where is this money coming from yeah and as we said that this portion would have to transfer from use tax in on order top, to make that on top of uh, on top of the 50 that we put in there so. now um, However, as I look at our positions that are currently vacant, um, I think by the time you get into this that you won't transfer anything because it's really going to be, we have to show it on paper as being balanced, but because of the vacant positions, you're not going to spend it anyway. We're not going to get them filled that quick. So why do we have to take the money out of, let's say we got filled, why, if we have over a million dollars, you know, we have way over our fund um, I forget what it's called but our goal for fund balance yeah if we have over a million dollars extra why can we not use that money to pay for this because and my whole thing is I don't mm -hmm. like taking it's one thing for me to take 50 grand out of use tax now you're talking about 130 grand or how much are you talking about 110 110 yeah. so you're basically taking a third of it yeah. out of out of use right. tax which we you know, I understand we can play the word game and, and say, well, you know, that is to take care of stuff, but that's not what we really told the people we were mm -hmm. going to use this money for. And I don't see how you go forward after this year without continuing this if you got these all filled. Where would that money come from going forward? Right. This would be, a, so I'm like, is this a one time thing? But I don't see how it is a one time thing if you. I not. think it'd be, I think it'd be hard to say that it would be a one time. Um, 
as uh, now, and, and I'll try to go back and answer some of the questions that you posed in this, in that the, the reason you don't take that money is you have to show it as being balanced as far as that your, your in essence, revenue is matching your operational expenses, okay? Um, so um, that's why you show it as we do, okay? Um, is this sustainable as you go forward? And I think it's the second part of what you're asking. Um, and without transferring use tax, it probably is not as you go forward. Um, now, we are seeing, you know, some growth as we've seen tonight, you know, in property taxes. We're seeing some growth in general sales tax, but obviously without the use taxes going forward, um, you're not going to, you, you probably cannot sustain that. So, because the only time we're going to see that we need to pull money out is if we have fully full staffed. staff police department. Fully staffed throughout. Which, the when's the last time we had a fully staffed police department? I agree. Five years ago. <laughs> So. And I would say, I mean, and then on the flip side, if we did this, I would say we've got to come up with a some kind of exit plan. Maybe we get the council involved in some kind of interview, exit interview, because I get it. Um, it's kind of like Dr. Shivers said last week. It's one thing to talk to the chief and say, well, I'm leaving because of this, or I'm leaving never talk to you. Maybe we need some outside because people are, you know, we're not getting people. I understand it's like, okay, 40 versus 42. If you're moving up your whole home for $2,000, that seems like a bit extreme. So we got to find a reason why people are leaving. And I, I hear a plethora of reasons. And if you want to fix a situation, then, then we've got to have that aspect, I think, as well going forward of, you know, where is the problem? Because they're leaving for other departments. I don't really hear many people leaving their departments to come here. So why is that? You know, why are they going, you know, and the county, yes, they raised their pay this year, but before this year, they were paying less and we had officers leaving here to go to the county for less. So why, you know, what can we do as a city and as a department that is going to make it better? Because it's not always about the dollars. I mean, that's great. We can give them a little bit more money. That's fine with me. But we've got, there's, we've got to figure out how to keep them. Getting them in the door is one thing, but you got to keep them. And that seems like the problem we have is we have officers come, they work, and then they leave. Besides the higher up people. They stay. The lower ones, they come in the door, and they stay six months or whatever, and they're out. So. Have we looked at the municipalities that offer, that do the same as we do? Like, what does, the, if their police force are also firefighters, have we looked at those, I guess we said five last time right. in the state of Missouri? Have we looked at what they pay their people that do those services? I know we compare to Centralia and places around here, but yeah. uh, like, what does a municipality that's like us, who we incorporate our fire and everything together, what they pay? there the uh, officers the last time when we looked at that was when we did the wage study and, and quite frankly it was all over the board it wasn't what you would call a reasonable comparison um, because uh, it just depends on where they're at in the state. oh yeah size yeah yeah because um, what is it queef core is the other one of them? Or, yeah. and how you compare to them is we don't yeah, right. yeah. you know it, it, what is it a, a Kennet or Kensit? And, and that's another one that's down down to the point that you just don't compare it to, you know. So it it so yes, we looked at them, but it's really hard to draw a comparison to. And I, you know, the we're not a one-off. You know, it's not like we're the one. Like we're like, oh, we got to raise our. I mean, everybody else is fighting that same battle. I mean, it'd be different if we're the one sitting there going, well, we got to raise our rates, and no one else is. Uh, you know, doing that, but I think at some point in time, my my true belief is that um, you know we have to have the the public services and public safety uh, is up there, um, and uh, I know that historically Mexico has done a great job with public safety, and I I know I don't want to see that fall off, and I don't think our citizens do. Um, and I'm going to push as much that way as possible. And then if we have to, you know, if something comes about and all of a sudden we get 
we fully staff everybody and we have to come back and say okay well now we got to take a look at is there some service we can't give or is there a property tax levy we have to pass I but um, you know and, and I agree I don't think it's all about money but uh, I think somebody coming out of the Academy doing that work I think it's and they have a family I think it's something they do look at early you know um, well and as we said before it's not just us yeah oh, absolutely it, it is a yeah. statewide industry-wide yeah. issue yeah. and uh, it's it's and it's across all positions yeah come into you education know. yeah <laughs> you're seeing the same thing yeah. you know absolutely yeah and that's why again we want to thank you for looking at this to try to be more competitive and not just trying to, to touch the average it's about being competitive as we go forth um, to try to make a difference so we do thank you for that well I don't know what we need to do but I I think we go with the 50 cent and I think we need to show our people we're gonna try and then we continue to try uh, in the future to you know keep the great people that we have and also try to recruit people to our community to you know do services for us so I don't know where we have to move on from here is that part of the motion I make a motion that we go with the 50 cent raise uh, to the annual budget for is that right for salaries mm -hmm. on top of the on top original of the, proposal on top of yeah. the original proposal we have a second Second by Yannick. Yes. Yes. Hey. Yes. Miller. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Okay, the next item is the payment of the claims. I move motion to pay those. Second. Williams. Yes. Hey. Yes. Miller. Yes. Briggs. Yes. Shivers. Yes. Uh, next item are, are comments first by the council mr. Haig uh, exciting week start school on Wednesday um, big thing buses will be on the road stop means stop see a school bus make sure you stop uh, dr. Shivers gave us a great speech this morning she was moving and shaking up there I don't know if she was going fast because she had to leave or she was just excited to talk to us but she did a great I job of <laughs> so she got up there and uh, a lot of uh, great activities uh, happening I know uh, you know sports are starting up and so at the end of the week is when Misha allows you for your first competitive date so I know softball and volleyball football all that stuff's gonna be going on so it'll be exciting time for Mexico okay. I'm bored you don't hear anything? okay Ms. Briggs well uh, Chief Rocket <laughs> Um, I want to thank the officers I, I took a and and they were so uh, I took a really nasty fall last week and hit my head really hard on the concrete and so they they're the first ones that show up I can't say maybe the ambulance is the first one but at least the police officers were and uh, they even went in and turned my stove off and uh, so I want to thank them and thank you so they are a nice group of people just, like, just you know look out for the kiddos as they're going back to school and you know just be mindful that I guess St. Brendan's already in and this weekend is the soybean festival yeah. so make sure that you go out support and have some fun okay. Mr. Cycle I don't have anything else this time your honor well you all got school and the beans taken care of so <laughs> no beans left for me at this time we'll take public comments if you'd like to make a public comment please come to the podium state your name and address and try to hold your comment to three minutes seeing none I move we adjourn into executive session pursuant to Rismo statute Missouri 610021 real estate matters second, second. Miller yes Williams yes Hay. yes Shivers yes Briggs. yes 